This is going to be part three of the series of tutorials for our um, Disco app. And in part two, we followed all the steps that took us to Blender to create the speaker um, parts, which were the cone and the ring and the dome. And last thing we did was to bring them into, I believe it was step number 11, we went back to Unity, we found the prefab, we dragged it to the scene, it looked good, we deleted it from the scene. And now we're going to start creating the game object, which is going to be pretty much like its grandfather. When I say grandfather, I mean there's going to be a parent, which we're going to use for transformation, and there's going to be a, a parent above that, which is going to manage everything. And we're going to create this, let's copy it, and create an empty game object. It's going to be reset transform other than Y1. Um, and we did that as a child of a speaker manager. We're going to create another empty game object, which is going to be called a speaker transform parent. Once it's created, once everything is done, I will explain why we need two parents. And this one is going to have absolutely reset transform. Um, the next step, oh, actually, sorry, there's going to be a transform with all zeros other than Y90. The reason we want Y90 is because of the way we created that speaker facing down, uh, not just down, but down and away from us in a blender. And the way we're going to instantiate it is facing up and towards us. So. 90. Um, next, that was step number 13. Step number 14, into speaker transform parent, drag the prefab speaker and give it the following um, things. So speaker transform parent, I'm going to find my prefabs and drag speaker into it. And speaker should have only three parts. It should have cone, dome, and ring. But we're going to give this speaker the transform. Let's see, I'm going to scale everything in a way that I can see both. Zero, zero, and here comes the, the kicker, the 0 0.28. That's exactly what why we need a, a parent above this. And X90, which is the other transformation we need to make this speaker look like it's up and facing us, like this. Now, when I look at it from the side, this is really what I want to show you. Let me look at it in um, anamorphic. What I want is the speaker to become thinner or thicker uh, as the volume goes by. So that's the Z right now. Why the Z? It's usually the Z is the thickness, right? So actually right now this is uh, because we turn it around, it's going to be the Y. But look at what's happening as I'm making it. Imagine this is the music. It's getting thinner and thicker on both sides. A real speaker gets this side closer to the ring, but the ring stays the same. So this is why I created a parent called a transform parent, where its Z can be changed, sorry, Z uh, scale can be changed this way because the whole speaker is removed from the center. If the speaker was in the center, then it would grow on both sides. But since the speaker is removed from the center, it's actually off-sided, now I can play around with the speakers. Let me even see it in uh, like this. The whole idea is that uh, our script is going to take the volume of the music and play with the Z of the parent transform. So why do we need another parent? For controlling both of them uh, and being the whole thing with the script and the that instantiates and finds which sound to work with and so on. So I'm going to return this back to one. Um, next step. So give it these settings. When viewed from the front, 
which is called orthographic, um, it should be exactly at the zero vertical grid. What do I mean by that? When viewed from the front, so I'm going to turn this around until it says front. See how this is exactly at the grid. You see the grid? If you don't see the grid, by the way, you can turn on or off the grid. And you can also edit the grid by making it more opaque. But right now, my speaker needs to be exactly at the grid, which means making it thinner or thicker is not going to move its front. It's going to stay exactly where it is. And only the dome and the cone will get closer to me. Uh, now we're going to unfold the speaker and you should see the cone, the ring and the dome. To the ring, give the material, the, you know, that material, uh, um, that metal material that ends with 16 and to the dome number 22. So the ring and the dome. Sorry, the ring and... the cone. Yep. The ring and the cone, because the dome, dome is going to have its own uh, material. Um, so, ring, the material that ends with 16. Let's look at it from the front and see why I chose it, because it looks kind of... Uh, nice and shiny, like it has little neon lights around it. And for the cone, not the dome, the cone, I using one of my favorite materials, you've seen me use it more times, and that's number 22. That's the one that looks like, you know, metal rings. And of course, we can play with it and so on. So this already looks like, you know, nice and metallic and, and, and impressive. Then for the dome, we're going to create our own material. Uh, we're going to create a new folder called My Materials. And in it, we're going to create a new material. I'm going to call it um, Speaker Dome. Matt, let me even add that to the here. Why just why not just do, dome mat? Because we're going to have another dome later on the big dome around the whole building. Um, Assign to the dome. Remember, the dome is this ring in the center. And as an albedo, we're going to choose the material that comes with a teacher's asset called Cocentric, which is basically just strips of color. But because it's a dome, those strips of color arrange themselves like, you know, like, like a target. It looks like this, just strips of color, but because it's wrapped around what used to be a uh, sphere, it wraps around pretty nicely. And also to give it some depth, we're going to use the normal that comes with it called cocentric normal and then it's really cool uh let's see what else other than that a little bit of metallic a little bit of smoothness and that's pretty much it so dome material i'm going to give it a little bit of metallic again to taste to see how it changes you know the way it reflects light and even more shininess around, you know, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, something like that. Um, what we want is to have two spotlights that are shining at the speaker. Now, why two spotlights? Because we want them to basically alternate. One of them to be on when the music is low and get dimmer and dimmer as the music gets loud. In other words, work opposite to the music and the other one work with the music. So if, for instance, there are two opposite colors, like let's say green and uh, red, when the music is quiet, it's more green. And when the music is loud, it gets more red. They're kind of like, you know, each, they work against each other. So we're going to create a spotlight called Spotlight Green. Parameters, don't forget to change render modes to important. And again, it's going to be as a child of speaker transform. Let's make sure. Yep. 
speaker transformed parent. In other words, a sibling of the speaker. Uh, light, spotlight. I'm going to call it spotlight green. And I'm going to give it these parameters. Let's see. It is a spot. Its range is going to be three because it doesn't need to be that big. Uh, its position is going to be a little to the side, 0 0.2. Uh, a little down, negative 0 0.15. And, of course, I want it in front of the speaker, and because of that, negative 0 0.5. So I can see that it's in front of the speaker. Um, also, uh, I can see that it's shining at the speaker, which is good, but I want to change the angle a little bit to uh, negative 10 degrees. I want to show you what that does if I turn it around. It means that it looks up a little bit. The Y angle, see, makes it look, you know, a little up. Uh, actually, sideways. Um, good. So it, it kind of, you know, highlights the shiny parts of the dome. Then as far as the spot angle, I'm going to make it 80, a little wider than usual. So it covers the whole speaker. Uh, I'm going to make it mode real time, but zero indirect multiplier. So I don't get that warning. No shadows and uh, important. And of course, a nice green color. If I turned off the sun, and eventually we will, so that the only source of light really is that Right now, that uh, spotlight, when I turn it on and off, you can see what it does. Let me turn off the gizmos for a second. Here's the idea. Because it's a little to the side, you can see how it fills it up with light, but not symmetrical. I think you're guessing that the second one is going to be a duplicate of that. Duplicate the spotlight and call it spotlight purple. Copy that name. Spotlight green. Let's make sure it's on. Right click and duplicate. Call it Spotlight Purple. And I believe that the changes are going to be very um, few, but there are going to be important changes. First of all, um, its position instead of 0 0.2 is going to be negative 0 0.2. In other words, from the other side. Um, see how it moved a little to the left. Uh, the Y, everything's the same, but the um, angle is going to be 10. It's, I believe the other one was negative 10. Yep. So this one should have been negative 10. So this one can be 10. So it's looking at it kind of from the other side. Uh, its color is going to be this kind of purple. everything else is going to be the same. So again, the idea is that when the green light is off and the purple light is on, then the purple light is creating this purple shine. They are both going to be on and the script is going to uh, control them basically one against each other. When one gets uh, more intense, the other one will get weaker and so on. So to complete this step, the hierarchy should look something like this. Let's see if we got that. We should have our direction light. I turned it off. Uh, the, the camera rig, I got that. The speaker manager one inside of that. The speaker transform parent inside of that. The speaker with its three parts and also spotlight green and spotlight uh purple. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is to uh, add a script to the speaker manager. Um, we're going to call it, and for right now, it's just going to be a default code because we don't have music yet. It's a script that will analyze music. We're just going to create a shell of it and move it into a folder we don't have yet called my script. So let's create one. So right click, create folder 
called my scripts and um we usually like you know when we add a script to the speaker manager we we uh select it and we go add component i just want to remind you that there's another way i can go to the folder my scripts right click create a c sharp script we want to call it speaker script exact name But that also means that since I let it be created, now it has a bad class name. So I'm going to open it. Otherwise, it's going to be an error. And an error will prevent us from doing anything else. Yep, it got the default name and I want it to be called speaker script save for right now it's just a shell uh, and move into the speaker and finally in this tutorial this is all we need from the speaker manager it's actually going to become an instantiated we're going to have 10 of those uh, an instantiated prefab so we're going to drag it into the folder prefabs now that it's got all the things it needs, we can always add more and um, then delete from the scene because it's going to be put on the scene by instantiate by being instantiated from a script. Uh, we got to the part number 23, which is time to add the music. We will get to that in the next part of the tutorial, which I believe will be part four.